Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, developer of the Integrative Movement System and author of the Corrective Exercise Solutions to Common Hip and Shoulder Dysfunction. Thanks for joining us and welcome to part four of this five-part mini-series course on developing shoulder stability and mobility in your clients. If you missed parts one through three, make sure you check them out because this information will develop and build directly upon the information I shared with you in parts one through three. In the last module, or I should say the last part of this series, we discuss a very important concept around the shoulder complex. And it's one that I struggled with for a long time, but really, really have gotten and embraced this concept more in the last few years. And it's really the concept that changed my own shoulders, that took me from chronic shoulder tightness and pain with rotator cuff tears and labral tears to helping me develop a more optimal and efficient strategy with less tightness and less discomfort and allowed me to continue to work as a chiropractic physician as well as continue to lift weights which I love to do. And that concept is most of our clients with shoulder issues, chronic tightness, discomfort, neck issues, and upper thoracic issues do not have weakness. What they have is a motor control issue. It's how their nervous system is controlling, aligning and controlling their shoulder complex in relationship to the head, neck, and upper thorax. So most of our clients that are doing strengthening exercises are oftentimes just strengthening their current strategy and or developing a different non-optimal and inefficient strategy. Just like I did when I first taught myself to retract and depress as I'd been taught to do and created this upper extended thorax and overly retracted and depressed shoulder complex. And then I got strong in that position. It was not a lack of strength that contributed to my issues. It was too much strength in the wrong patterning with a wrong motor control strategy. So as we're sharing these corrective exercises with you, the primary goal of these exercises is to help your client develop more optimal and efficient strategy for stability and alignment, and then ultimately for movement. All our patterns that we develop from here on out are designed around this position where the shoulders are open and wide so we cue our clients to be long and open through the shoulders and where they have space between their upper arms and their body so their elbows are not locked down tight into their side which overly retracts and oftentimes depresses and compresses the shoulder complex on top of the thorax so from this position we keep that nice open and wide shoulder position and now we're going to take a strap or a towel with our hands about shoulder width apart and just pull lightly on that shoulder strap. So that way we activate the muscles around the shoulder complex in more optimal alignment and with more optimal control. So we're not teaching our clients to pull down to depress. We're not teaching them to lift the chest up. We're cueing them to be long through their spine as if they're being pulled up from the back side of their spine. We're cueing them to be open and wide through their shoulders and then just gently pull on the strap to maintain this aligned position. And then we'll teach them to breathe into their thoracopelvic cylinder, especially into the upper thorax, so they're breathing more front to back versus breathing up into their chest where they're not breathing into their back and maintain this position, this isometric position as they're performing three-dimensional breathing. Because from here, we'll have our clients then start to move their shoulders once they understand how to maintain that position without over-gripping. So I'll flip around so you can see what this pattern looks like from the backside as well. We'll have our clients maintain that long spine position as if they're being pulled up from the backside of their head and neck as well as the rib cage. They'll maintain the rib cage position and stack above their pelvis, and then they'll grab the strap and pull gently apart on the strap, maintaining space between the upper arms and the body. They'll continue to breathe into the rib cage, so side to side into the rib cage and through the backside of the rib cage throughout the pattern, maintaining this isometric position, the open and wide shoulder position, and without compressing down on the shoulder complex, keep wide, keep the shoulder blades light upon the thorax as they perform breathing. Once the clients develop more optimal alignment and control in this position, then they can start to move. So we'll have our clients breathe in, and as they breathe out, they start to lift their arms up, maintaining a 90 degree elbow bend, and maintaining that nice aligned and controlled position. They'll breathe in to come back down, and then they'll breathe out as they bring their arms back to the overhead position. Breathing in, and breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. 
generally we'll have our clients do three to five repetitions per set. In this video, I've been sharing with you one of our key corrective exercise patterns once we teach our clients how to develop more optimal upward rotation and posterior tilt from the modified wall plank position. And this is a great pattern to teach our clients how to maintain that nice open and wide shoulder position and then how to control this pattern as they start to move their shoulders because this is ultimately the position we need our clients to be in when they row, when they do a horizontal chest press, when they do an overhead press, and when they do an overhead pull type pattern like a pull down and or pull up. So this corrective exercise pattern, the pull apart exercise with pullovers oftentimes, we, we perform it, is one of the key patterns we use to help our clients learn where this more optimal position is and then how to move their arms from this position or in other words, dissociate the upper arm from the scapula while maintaining optimal alignment and control. Because this is ultimately where we're going to in the next video, where we teach our client how to integrate alignment and control of the scapula, the head, neck, and thorax into their functional movement patterns so they can ultimately accomplish their health and fitness goals. Thanks again for watching. This is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Stay tuned for part five, where we discuss a very important muscle the latissimus dorsi and its contribution to optimal shoulder function as well as how it contributes to common shoulder issues like the forward shoulder position. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time at Integrative Movement Insider.